Good afternoon, this is Alan Burgos from Hashtag Walk with Lan. So today we will be dealing with overview of systems integrations or uh, we will be discussing as well the five uh, challenges and drivers of, um, of system integrations. Okay. Right. Now, um, in today's world, every enterprise has a diverse set of applications and systems. Uh, the name of the game there is diversity. You know, they have lots of of brands and um, and products uh, in terms of applications uh, under um, under disposal, under portfolio. Okay, they have their Macs. Uh, they have their uh, Windows platforms. Uh, including the networks, no? um, they have the Cisco products, the, the Juniper products, Huawei products, etc. And these, um, these, these applications and systems are interconnected with each other. Okay, um, and connecting those systems is often a requirement for business needs. And indeed, indeed, it is a challenge for their IT or uh, for their IT people, IT department, for this matter, for that matter. All right. Now, let's define first what is a system integration. Okay, system integration is basically, it's a melding existing systems. You have um, a, an existing systems, okay, and you want that, um, that particular system, the, the existing system, to perform well, no? to help the community, all right? And new technologies to form a more capable system. No? Because um, um, sooner or later, uh, that particular system systems should be able to to improve no not not basically for the sake of improving but for the sake of helping the the community all right now um why do we need to improve because we need additional tasks and um to enhance performance why do we need to to uh, to upgrade because we want uh the task to to help the community and enhance um enhance performance okay the next is this this particular slide i was able to read it on on philippine star i think okay Pasig city improves online scholar application systems why uh does the go the city government of Pasig wanted to to improve the online scholar application system maybe not not necessarily because of of a problem but because they want to help the community maybe they want to uh to look for the scholars you know uh, they want to satisfy the scholars, no? uh, something like that. Oh, so because among among the citizens, among the citizens of Pasig, no, maybe they wanted to to improve on the online uh, scholar application system. So thank you very much to Mayor Vico Soto. Okay, so let's go to the challenges and drivers. Of course, definitely there is a good side on on integrating um, additional systems and and tasks to to the existing system. Okay, to meld it with the existing one. But of course, definitely there are challenges and drivers as well. Okay, so these are the five challenges with system integrations, right? Uh, connecting to monolithic, uh, monolithic systems. No, all right. No, we. Okay, uh, I use this, uh, this, this, this mobile phone as an example because uh, on the mobile phone. Um, it's interwoven to each other, right? No, uh, the applications there, the, the 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 libraries are interwoven and interconnected with each other. No, there there is a good side on it, but the problem here is if there is um, if you got a problem with one application, maybe uh, it could affect another application and, and so on and so forth. There is a domino effect. So what's the what's the uh, what's the result of that? Uh, you should be able to uninstall it uh, or uh, reinstall the operating system of the mobile phone, something like that. So, okay, so uh, uh, that's the reality, no? That's the reality. Um, most of the enterprises that we have, have these monolithic systems, no? So, and it's not often not possible to get rid of those systems easily. You know? In the past, I worked in, in, um, um, in IBM and then we were assigned in, in um uh in a bank okay and then they were using uh, legacy systems old old systems no um of course definitely you cannot read of those 
uh, of those systems because those systems were able to help uh, the bank uh, at that very moment. Okay, so this is because business heavily depend on such systems as they are most legacy systems and cannot be replaced for the sake of integration. If uh, that particular system um, is um, is helping the the community, the company, why should you replace it? Okay, simple as that. So a software system is called monolithic if the architecture is monolithic in nature. What is monolithic? Okay, monolithic architecturally architecture functionally distinguishable, distinguishable aspects are not architecturally separate components but are all interwoven. No? So I mean, uh, okay, they are interconnected as what I've mentioned. All right, now, um, because of this architecture, since they are interwoven to each other, we need to be careful because that will be a challenge. Integration on this particular example will be a big, big challenge. So a system integrator has to take care to identify and choose the best way of integrating with monolithic systems within the enterprise. Okay, so a systems integrator has to take care to identify and choose the best way of integrating with monolithic systems within the enterprise. So that is, uh, we call that a, a person who integrate um, the systems or the tasks or the technology on an existing system, we call this person a system integrator. Maybe that's you, all right? So let's go to number two. Okay, number two here on this particular slide, okay, there is a person in, uh, uh, he's looking at maybe at, at the data and different business units see data differently, right? It depends. The same thing with you. You see a, a, uh, you see a data differently based on your interest also, okay? Now, um, if you will be asking a per marketing person versus, uh, and you will be asking uh, an HR person, maybe they will look uh, the, the data differently or they will answer your question differently. No? All right, now, the use of existing enterprise data is critical to business success. Each business unit or business domain, no? uh, the example that I gave is a marketing department, and an HR department, they will see the data differently because, look, look, guys, so, uh, they, um, um, they, the, in terms of operations, they are different. No, uh, they have different uh, operational responsibilities. Okay, um, they have different functionalities. Um, they are not the same. Okay, but maybe, maybe they they may be using different systems or applications. But, okay. Uh, but their their thoughts and thinking is is it's not the same. All right. Now, uh, okay. Now, but if in terms of individual, maybe uh, that's fine. That's fine. But of course, a standard data model is required within the enterprise in order to integrate the systems. Okay, that's the job of a system integrator. A system integrator not only needs to satisfy the requirements of a business unit. But, but needs but needs to think beyond this and the design an integration which has a standardized view of data within the enterprise so meaning to say meaning to say you as a system integrator has um have big 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 responsibilities in terms of of this one okay now uh okay okay Let's let's proceed with number three, okay? Num number three here is do it fast or do it better, okay? So, you know, as an IT people, okay, you need to deliver something uh, as mu as much uh, as fast as you can, all right? Uh, you need to deliver something to the uh, to the business entity, to the to the community, to the to the corporation itself. Because if you cannot do that, if you cannot be able to to do that, maybe uh, the next day you will be fired. That's true. Okay. Um, and and all of these things are constrained with time and cost. Okay. Now there are constraints on it. Okay. Because you cannot buy everything. No. It should be within the budget. Okay. And you cannot do that all at once. Okay. There there should be a deliverable time. Projects are often managed by non-technical managers who are business-centric. No? In fairness to them, they are not that technical, but they are business-centric. They are good in, in terms of, of, of 
of uh, project management, something like that. So there are two people there, you know? It's either you are technical centric or you are business centric. All right. Now, and then lack understanding, lack understanding on the best practices and architecture principles. Okay. Now, okay. So again, the, this is the problem of the system integrator. A system integrator must find a balance and ensure that the integration solution is not just about the, meeting the functional requirements of today. But of course, definitely, this uh, all the things that you need to do right now should be able to okay to to be uh, to perform in terms of the potential future right and non functional requirements okay now such as performance no it should it should perform maybe 5 years 10 years from now okay 15 years from now not necessarily um not necessarily you need to replace it uh, after a year after 2 years no it's not like that okay um uh, the the application or the technology that you integrate with the existing system, with the existing technology, should be able to perform or at, outperform, okay, the the uh, the recent or uh, the current uh, technology, something like that. All right. Now the next one is scalability. If the the user uh, can be able to host one hundred users, something like that, okay. Uh, in the next 10 years, if the organization would um, um, would increase its population, something like that, okay, so you should be able to host that uh, those those users. If this one million users would uh, would be added to the existing system, okay, uh, you should be able to do that. Okay, you should be uh, you should be able to know how to design that. All right, reusability and maintenance are the other things are, are the other things also all right now the next one is choosing the right tool for integration here you have a nail okay and then you have a flat screw the name of this uh, caricature or this this uh, character is erwin okay now erwin is trying to uh, to hammer uh, trying to uh, hammer no but he's not using the hammer or the martillo in in filipino okay so there's a problem with that no um he knows what's the goal, but he do not know how to use the right tool. All right, right tool for the integrate, right tool for this one. So there are plenty of tools available in the market. The, the same thing with there are many many applications out there, but it's up to you how to choose it. You now based on your interest and based on your, uh, on your, on your goal. Right, choosing the right tool for an enterprise is a challenge. The same thing with if you are an individual trying to. To download applications based on your on your needs, there are challenges on it. The same thing with this, no? The same thing with this. In modern connectivity, an integration tool must always, almost, almost certainly support hybrid integration. When we say hybrid, the, uh, remember what I have mentioned uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the first slide is that um, um, we are having different brands and products okay uh, different brands and products okay so uh, your technology or the system should be able to support hybrid integrations mean, meaning to say many many brands in and products hybrid integration allows on premise applications to seamlessly integrate seamlessly okay uh, i want to repeat that word seamlessly integrate with cloud based applications because this time around we are not only concerned of the standalone, the, the, the network applications, not like that. Um, we have many, many, many cloud-based applications. Uh, it bridges the network, the, your network, your ordinary network, if I may say so, between your existing enterprise and the other, other technologies, cloud technologies, such as uh, business to consumer, business to... Um, uh, business to business, bring your own device, okay, uh, software as a service, platform as a service, security as a service, and many others, okay. Now, of course, definitely we need to, to, to have, uh, we need to take into consideration the big data also, all right. Now, hybrid integration is decided as enterprises may not want to go completely on cloud due to depending on legacy systems. Well, definitely they do not want to upgrade because 
they take into consideration the legacy systems, right? Uh, if we say legacy systems, this is not only limited to the machines, but we need to take into consideration those people who are retirees, maybe who, who soon to be retired, okay, who do not know how to, um, to, to study, uh, who do not know how to use the, the existing system, all right? The soon to be part of the system itself. Regulatory compliance issues and concerns around security and privacy of some sensitive data. So you need to take into consideration also some compliance issues such as maybe um, uh, the Data Privacy Act or, or the um, anti-cybercrime law or the HIPAA in the United States, all right? And then um, some other compliance uh, and regulatory compliance issues. All right, now hybrid integration tools allow addressing these gaps and helps business leverage. So if you could, uh, you could be able to download some APIs, no? Uh, or, or you can do your own APIs also. Okay. The next one is uh, the next one is the major challenge with integration is integration. Yes, yes. I'm <laughs> I'm serious about that. Okay. If uh, when I said the major challenge with integration is integration itself. When you go to uh, when you go to, to HP, when you go to Microsoft, you go to IBM, Microsoft, etc., or, or Dell, for that matter, they will be telling you that the best integration is coming from them. The best integration solution is coming from their company. But what if, I, uh, I'm telling this to you again, in, uh, on, on, on each particular company, they have different brands and they have different products on their disposal meaning to say they are managing this one problematically or with with some challenges okay and that's where the integration challenge comes from all right now choosing right set of products for your business is is very very important the project the product rather chosen should allow integration with other systems or products either via a web, a web service layer or using libraries, okay? So therefore, uh, when you are a system integrator later on, you need to choose your product very well. And this product and this technology that would be integrated with the existing one should be compatible enough. Enough, like <laughs> my, my analogy here is when you choose your, your partner, okay? Maybe sooner, maybe he or she is good right now, but sooner or later, uh, he or she would not be. Oh, she would not. Uh, she will not. So, meaning to say, you need to choose very, very, uh, very good for that thing. Okay? Now, uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> this is the assignment, right? assignment that I discussed during the class. All right. Now, uh, we are done with this. Uh, again, this is Alan Burgos from Hashtag Walk With Land. If you learned something uh, on this particular presentation, please do like this particular video, share it with your friends, share it with your family members, share it with your colleagues, to your classmates, okay, uh, to your professors, share it to, to them, okay, and now, and please do subscribe to my channel, hashtag walk with Lan. again, this is Alan Burgos, I want to say thank you very much, and God bless.